The Los Angeles Lakers closed out Game 1 of the Western Conference quarterfinals on a beastly 15-0 run, beating a Memphis team who in Tennessee was 35-6 on their home floor during the regular season. AR-15, Austin Powers Reeves, Hillbilly Kobe, Aust him Reeves, Austin, who do you think you are, I am Reeves, whatever you want to call him, is breaking out before our eyes. This man AR just dropped 14 points in the clutch and didn't miss. Speaking of breaking out, Rui Hachimura outscored the entire Grizzlies bench with the most points off the pine in Lakers history with 29 on 97% true shooting. But Desmond Bain wasn't having any of it, saying post-game, quote, it's probably the best game of his career, it's a seven-game series, let's see if he can do it again on Wednesday, end quote. That now gives Rui some bulletin board material, we'll get back to the product of Gonzaga, but going back to Reeves, and here's what he had to say about his performance. You, you dream about being on a stage like this. So guys, I know that quote from Austin was tough, but nothing tops the quotes like the one which are on your screen. My man's almost like a reincarnated Martin Luther King Jr. Basketball-wise, stay tuned for the pure craftiness of this man, every typical insane feat from the chosen one, and much, much more, which I promise you can't miss. Right quick, wanted to thank each and every one of you for making this channel what it is, pause to read the commenter shoutout for my last upload, and join the 12.2% of you watching that are subscribed by splashing the sub box. Thanks again, you guys legitimately make this the best platform on YouTube. Further support this content by following your boy on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, back to the vid. Which will lead off on a dimmer note, unfortunately, as John Morant was forced to leave the game after a scary fall on his right hand late in the fourth quarter. With 5.48 remaining, he attacked the basket and fell to the court after making contact with Anthony Davis on an offensive foul. He immediately ran to the locker room. Joss spoke on his injury post-game, saying, quote, It's tough, man, especially with everything I've been through pretty much this season. My main focus is to be out there for my guys. Now another incident where that's pretty much in jeopardy. It's pretty much how much now I can tolerate. If I feel like I can go out there, be somewhat myself, I'll probably play, but I don't want to do anything to hurt the team, end quote. Obviously, no one wants to see someone get hurt like Morant did, as tough falls like that one are no joke. Just ask Giannis, who was forced to leave Game 1 of his series against Miami with a hard fall. But from a Lakers standpoint, regardless of Jaws' status for the rest of the series, and while there'll be plenty of gassing up of the Lakers from the likes of yours truly, LA can't buy into said gassing up, and conversely, must keep their foot on the gas. On the injury front, Anthony Davis played through one of many injuries he's played through recently, evidently injuring his arm, and you could tell right here he says, I can't move my arm. AD would speak on his injury postgame, saying, quote, had a little stinger where my arm went completely numb. It was numb. I couldn't move it, end quote. Pretty insane that despite his injury, AD had one of his all-time best playoff performances, specifically on the defensive end, as the Brow racked up 22 points, 12 boards, 3 dimes, 3 steals, but most miraculously, 7 blocks. The quadruple punch of AD, Rui, Reeves, and Braun combined for a beastly 95 points in this one. Speaking of LeBron, the longevity awards for James just keep stacking up, as Braun has played 266 playoff games in his career, the most of all time, and far more than the entire Grizzly franchise combined. And don't forget, this man's 10 finals appearances are more than 27 NBA franchises. The Le owner of my Lebronto Raptors isn't to be messed with or doubted. In terms of Game 1, longtime LeBron D rider Skip Bayless took a very rare W by tweeting out, the Los Angeles Lakers just won Game 1 by 16 at Memphis as a 4-point underdog, with LeBron James as their fourth best player, statement, that Skip tweet said. When you look at all the chase down blocks LeBron racked up in this one, even just the forced misses he impacted in general, it's questionable whether or not he was the fourth best player. That became especially questionable after he activated the fuck you three down the stretch. 
It's nuts that his quote-unquote best friend in Draymond Green said on his podcast recently that James looked gassed, considering LeBron led the NBA in transition points this year, and the 2016 Finals-esque chase down he pulled off on Bane, James is anything but gassed, and he's as motivated, plus as in shape, as ever before. We'll never know if he was telling the truth based off the fact that he's memed for being a notorious liar, but LeBron gave his thoughts on the ongoing breakout campaign from Austin Reeves, saying, quote, It's not surprising to me. I knew from the first practice we had he wasn't going to be a two-way player for long. I've been around the game long enough to know great basketball IQ players, type of players that fit with my game, and I knew Austin would be that, end quote. In terms of this game in particular, here's a live look at LeBron's reaction to Reeves going off. Too small! This man too small! And y'all keep too small! That's what he told you. Speaking of Reeves, and all jokes and memes aside in regards to this man, and he's quietly become one of the craftiest bucket getters the NBA has to offer. AR-15's ability to position his body and stay balanced for tough finishes in traffic around the hoop, generally his motor throughout the course of a game to maintain stamina despite all the hits that he takes, and most prominently, his scoring wherewithal to create whatever he wants while staying calm, cool, and collected whilst creating in the pick and roll, are qualities which have now made him certifiably LA's third best player. That statement is with all due respect to a man I've dubbed in the past as lefty Stephen Curry D'Angelo Russell, and while that may have been an exaggeration for D'Lo, his lack of toxic ego and how far he's come as a teammate since his first stint as a Laker have been extremely valuable to the squad. Whether it's taking a back seat, supporting his teammates relentlessly by getting hyped for them, or whipping out his contagious ice in the veins celly, the vibe enhancing is more than evident from D'Lo. How can we forget about Desmond Bain's very best friend in another man who made his playoff debut in this one in Rui? Hachimura was all over the place in this one, using his 7'2 wingspan and decent speed for a 230 pounder to crash the glass on the O boards, leak out in transition, shoot over the top of minis with his high release point, or take it off the dribble for massive posters like this one over top Triple J. Hachimura can make Bane's comments look stupid as hell if he keeps putting in reps on his spot up three point shot because with all the weapons in this Laker rotation, a lot of the time the Grizz have no choice but to leave him open, so he's naturally going to get a lot of warm up esque jumpers in the flow of the offense. If Reeves is definitively crafty, then Hachimura is definitively versatile with his ability to play positions 3 through 5. Adam Silver may want to investigate the Washington Wizards giving up merely a few second rounders for him. Nevertheless, Rob Palenka, Darvin Ham, and this monster Lake Show attack will take it. As the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. All in all, while on this channel's last Laker video covering their grinded out play in W, we covered how LA could win games in ugly fashion, their monster fourth quarter run and flowing rhythm throughout the entirety of game one against Memphis proved they can also take care of business in a high scoring, modern day type affair. It's shaping up to be a special run for this championship bred Laker ball club, but again, if they buy into this gassing up, they'll lose their edge, something that can't happen. Anthony Davis has to keep staying healthy, LeBron and D'Lo have to keep leading the troops and playing smart, turnover-free basketball. Now we wait to see what happens on Wednesday in Game 2. This was D-Flo, have a good one, and peace.